Today I'm going to give you a short demonstration of using the power of cloud client computing to migrate an existing cloud-based Windows 7 or Windows XP desktop to Windows 8 in less than 60 seconds. So the first part of my demonstration, I'm going to start with a Windows XP desktop. You can see here I have Windows Explorer open. I have some other local applications installed on my Windows XP desktop. I can use File Explorer to browse around and do many of the functions common that you're used to on a standard Windows XP desktop. Now when I log out of my Windows XP desktop, it'll bring me back to my cloud client device that I'm using to connect to this cloud-based desktop. In this example, it's a WISE T10. When I enter my user credentials, my username, password, and domain, I'm communicating with the Citrix Zen Desktop Connection Broker, which is automatically connecting me based on my credentials to a Windows XP desktop. This XP desktop, again, based in the cloud, will behave like any other Windows XP desktop. The real advantages of using the cloud-based desktop will be include being able to migrate this to another version of an operating system very quickly. So I'll go ahead and log out of my Windows XP desktop. It'll take me back to my cloud client login screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up an RDB connection to my desktop delivery control, or excuse me, to my Active Directory server. And I'm going to modify the group membership of my demo user, user1. I'm going to go ahead and add him to a desktop group I've created called Windows 7 Desktop. At the same time, I'm going to remove him from the Windows XP desktop group that I've created. In this way, I'm using Active Directory group membership to control which cloud-based desktop my user is given access to. So now when I go back to my cloud client device, in this case a Dell Wise T10, and enter my user credentials, the same user credentials I used before, I'm still using user1, and communicate with my desktop delivery controller, I will automatically be logged into a Windows 7 desktop. So you can see very easily by using Active Directory groups, I was able to change group membership and I migrate this user who was previously using a Windows XP desktop to now a fully functional Windows 7 desktop. The user didn't even need to reboot his device, just log out, make the change, and log back in. You can see the Windows 7 desktop will move around and I'm using the Citrix HDX protocol so the user experience will be very good. Now let's take this demonstration one step further. If I go ahead and log out of my Windows 7 desktop and go back to my cloud client device and then go back to my Active Directory groups and take user 1 and this time I'm going to add him to an Active Directory group called Windows 8 Desktop. At the same time I'm going to remove him from the Windows 7 Desktop group. Now when I go back to the screen which has my thin client login screen and enter the same user credentials. At this screen I'll enter user1 and then same domain and password. And this time because of the group membership the desktop delivery controller determines that I'm going to be directed to my Windows 8 desktop pool and autoclaim automatically make a connection there. You'll notice I did not need to log in again once the credentials were passed directly from logging into the thin client device and passed into the connection broker and right into the desktop. At the time of the recording of this video I actually am using some pre-release code of Zen Desktop which allows a connection to a Windows 8 desktop. For this example I'm going to go ahead and log out of the Windows 8 desktop and I want to show you how I can take this same user and I'm going to add him back to a Windows 7 desktop group. In this way, you, I can show how you can migrate from Windows XP to Windows 7 to Windows 8. And let's say that for app compatibility or maybe just user usability, the user's not familiar with the Windows 8 tile 
interface and they want to go back and use their Windows 7 desktop, I can take user 1. I've now added him to the Windows 7 desktop group. I've left him in the Windows 8 desktop group. So now he actually has access to multiple different desktops. In this case, he can choose which one he wants to connect to. And I'll choose to go back into the Windows 7 desktop. So using a cloud client computing strategy, you can see it's very easy to give users access to multiple centralized desktops, even if they are on different operating systems, and allows you the ability to switch between those operating systems very quickly. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit about how I've configured this device. I'm going to go in as an admin mode and you can see under the remote application or, um, I've actually set up my connection broker as a Citrix Zen desktop under my remote connections. I want to show you a quick demonstration just so you can get an idea if I restart this cloud client device you notice it'll reboot in a matter of just one or two seconds. Um, the actual video capture technology that I'm using to record this video takes longer to initialize than the device does to reboot. So I'm, I've rebooted during that time. I'm going to log back in. And again, you remember the user is still now in that both groups, so he has access to the Windows 7 and Windows 8 desktops. I'm going to go back into that admin mode, and I want to give you a quick demonstration of how I could update this cloud client device. So should I have a need to upgrade the firmware, you can see this device is 7.1207. So in the same way that I can centrally uh, manage the device, I can actually go into the central file server, which is an FTP, HTTP, or HTTPS server. And I'm going to go ahead and find a version of firmware that's different than the 7.1207. In this case, for the T10, I've found the 7.1 underscore 130. I copy this file. I place it uh, next to my INI file. I'm going to replace the one that I have there. Now, when I reboot my device, it'll notice that the firmware file in the central file server for the WISE device is different than the version of firmware on the file, and it'll begin the upgrade process. So the device again it rebooting in just one or two seconds it's actually now rebooted and began the upgrade process as soon as the video capture card kicks in there we go we can see the upgrade process begin so what it's doing during this time is it's downloading the entire firmware file file for the Dell Wise T10 which is about four to four and a half megs in size um, so it's not going to stress out the network and it's going to be very quick uh, to upgrade especially when you're comparing to alternative thin client operating systems like Linux or Windows Embedded which can be uh, a gig or more in size. So once the new firmware file has downloaded and we've actually completed um, downgrading the firmware in this case again we're going from that 7 one underscore 207 to the 7.130 the device will reboot. So the amount, now my device has gotten that updated version of firmware and it's rebooted. It's back to the login screen. I'll go back into the admin mode which is the username and password that I actually specified inside my INI file and you can see that the device has completed changing its firmware version. Here you can see the file server slash path. This is actually the location where I store that configuration file. In this case on the device you notice it was grayed out. The reason it was grayed out, it was actually passed out to my device as a custom option tag for my DHCP server. Um, most our DHCP servers will allow you to create your own custom option tags. In this case, a Microsoft DHCP server. I've created a 161 option tag uh, with the value of an IP address or DNS server of my file server. So again, I'm putting the IP address of my file server in there and it automatically found the, the path. I'll go ahead and show you where you can see this is the actual the uh, INI file that I'm using in this case uh, to configure this device. You can see the, the basic settings that I have there. So again, hopefully this uh, video was uh, easy for you to understand and um, is helpful to show you how you can leverage the power of cloud client computing to easily migrate um, from any desktop. So once you've got set up a, a Windows 7 desktop, you can migrate to XP or XP to Windows 7 or Windows 8. Thank you very much.